And they're going to want you to lead them and give them purpose and direction when shit gets real. They're going to be depending on you. If they can't depend on you, what are you waiting CO for? Why do you wear stripes? It's worthless. You should just go ahead and get your specialist back because you're doing a bad job. Period. Hi, everybody. Please welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since you guys have seen this setup. If you guys are new here, my name is Steph Siren Baker, aka Sweets Color, not Color Color. I am recording with my vlog camera today, so if you see me looking to the right, it's because um, I got a new camera and I was supposed to be recording with my G uh, T6i. I had this for a while now, but this is what I was supposed to be recording with, but I ordered the wrong battery from Best Buy, so we're using the vlog camera today. Um, so yeah, this is my new camera, the Canon. I mean, the Sony VV1. Um, yeah, but it's been a minute since I sat in front of you guys and did a video, an army advice video. It's been a minute since I've had the setup. It's been a minute since I've been in, you know, the groove and the passion, what I love doing. Again, if you guys are new here, my name is Staff Siren Baker now. I haven't sat in front of you guys as Staff Siren Baker. I've been sitting in front of you guys as Siren Baker for a couple years. So, it's a new and approved Staff Siren Baker here, um, to give some NCO advice, some soldier advice, not just military advice, you know what I'm saying? Um, then now for new people... Five years active duty. I was in the reserves for two years. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been active duty for five years. And, I mean, I've been ripping and running. I haven't really did any really content videos where I actually sat down in front of my camera in a long time. Like, probably a year at this point have I, have I sat down and actually did a military-related video in a sit-down set session. My uniform on and all that, all that, all that. But, yeah. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about toxic leadership. What toxic leadership is, what it isn't, because, you know, sometimes soldiers be thinking that they NCO is toxic when really they just enforcing the standard. And basically some ways um, to how to deal with toxic leadership, and not only that, but um, a little mini story time about, like, how I dealt with toxic leadership um, as a soldier. Um, but, okay, so, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into the video. All right, so first let's talk about what toxic leadership is isn't because i've ran into a lot of soldiers that say the nco is toxic and they don't even be toxic they just like the fact that they one getting corrected in a tactful manner they don't like to be corrected at all nowadays soldiers be knowing they're out of regulation hair be messed up nails be too long got a hole in their shirt they have a must i mean a beard with no shaver profile they boots is below the three the third eyelid um uniform way too tight you know just little stuff that you know that's not in the regulation that's out of regulation having miscolored book bags or whatever the case may be and the fact that a soldier or nco or whoever the fact, whoever the case correct them even if it's in a manner um that's respectful because it should always be respectful you know what i'm saying they shouldn't be belittling you while correcting you however you were wrong so if they're stern about you not being in regulation it is what it is you're out of reg and you knew that so i know sometimes i sometimes be pushing a limit with the regulation maybe my nails are a little too long i forgot to get a fill in or my bob is a little too long and there's a possibility that somebody might correct me um i knew that when i put my uniform on in the morning i knew that when i looked at my nails i was like he's low-key a little long i knew that um i shouldn't have whatever the case may be and i decided to go to work with it anyway that there's a possibility possibility that somebody was going to say something so i can't really get mad because i knew you we know what the regulations are we know when we out of reg we know when we're pushing the regulation and we know there's a possibility that somebody's going to say something so to be upset and feel like somebody is toxic because they nobody said nothing but them, it doesn't matter. You're out of reg, period. So as long as they're doing it tactfully in a manner of which you, you know, give you a, a ample enough time to change it, um, you know, not, I'm going to do it right now, I'm going to, blah, blah, blah. No, by tomorrow or by Friday, you need to have your hair back in regulation, you need to have them nails off, you need to, blah, blah, blah. whatever the case may be, you know, in a very tactful manner. If I correct somebody... I ain't correcting them as an a-hole. I'm very um, professional and I have a lot of tech. I'm very good at what I do. And I know how to speak sternly but that, without sounding like an asshole. Like, but I can be straight to the point, blunt. This is the regulation. Um, you need to be in compliance with it by, you know, this date. And, you know, just give them a chance to fix their, their deficiency. And then if it's not fixed, then taking the next step to be like, mm, I can, I gave you a verbal, you know, counseling. I told you this is what needs to get done. Then put it on paper. And if stuff doesn't get fixed from there, then you take it higher. You know what I'm saying? But it don't take but so much. You don't got to talk to people, you know, crazy to get it right. But that doesn't make them a tax leader because they are in make, put basically enforcing the standard. Enforcing the standard does not make an NCO a tax leader. Um, I've seen a lot of soldiers saying that their NCO is toxic because they put them on detail or they put them on duty. 
Now that's, you can't really help, okay? So, in in reason, now, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on a manner of which is in reason. So you got put on detail every other week, but they but y'all don't have a lot of soldiers. Or you don't have a specific job in the motor pool. You are like the soldier that doesn't do anything, not in a negative way, but like, you know, we got this soldier that always does the dispatches and this is like their primary job. And we got this soldier that does the road test. And we got this soldier who kind of mm, doesn't have a job for this week. Okay, you're going on detail. You have to go on detail or, you know, in case maybe, oh, they keep putting me on detail. Nobody else goes on details. I feel like everybody in your squad should go on detail. But if you don't have a job or you're not, like, say, for instance, I'm the squad leader and I have an NCO who's my, like, right-hand man. And then I have a soldier. I'm not going to put my NCO on duty because I actually need him to do, you know, NCO tasks that I couldn't rely on a private or a specialist to do. So the specialist got to go on duty or detail often. It's not because I'm looking down upon you or I'm just trying to palm my details. Some half the time I feel bad putting my soldiers on detail. I don't be wanting them to go on detail. I'll be trying to get them out of it my darn self. But if you got to go on detail, you got to go on detail within reason. Now, if there's fucking 10 soldiers and you're the only one on detail every time, okay, yeah, sorry, what's going on, you know, why am I the only one on detail? Like, why can't other people go on detail? Like, what's going on? But if it's, like, a legit reason to why you're being picked, legit, legitimate, like, there's a real reason why you're, why you have to be on detail the most or something of that nature, doesn't make them toxic. And, um, yeah, basically, anyone that enforces the standard and you don't like the fact that you're being corrected because nobody else said something, doesn't make them a toxic leader. That just makes them a leader. That makes them an NCO. It makes we enforce these standards. Period. So that doesn't make them a toxic leader because they're doing what is said in the regulation. You know what I'm saying? So take that out your mind. My NCO put me on duty. They don't like me. No, maybe I had to put you on duty. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you know I looked at the workload and what each soldier is doing, and you're the one that can go on duty this week. Hey, I'm, I'm recording a video, guys. I need y'all to calm it down. That's my little two little doggies. Brief intermission. Tequila, come here. Meet my baby girl, Tequila. Oh, oh. She's a Yorkie. Say hey, mamas. You can't see her face. Her, her eyebrows is in the way. But it's Tequila. It's Tequila. Look at the camera. Look. <laughs> then I got Tipsy over there. He's content with his bone right now. But anyway, back to, back to the video. All right, so let's talk about what toxic leadership is. Okay, so <clears throat> I know this all too well because I had nothing but toxic leadership up until my last chain of command as far as my uh, platoon, sorry, and platoon leader. Uh, ups and that, up until that, I had nothing but toxic leadership. So I know this all too well. Um, and I, I strive as an NCO not to be a toxic leader. And I wanted to be an approachable NCO that all soldiers in my formation or not can feel comfortable to talk to me about anything and everything, whether it's personal um professional or just a, a listening ear to vent to that's what i wanted to be and the goal that i had for myself when i paid into e5 because i know what it feels like to have toxic leadership and it sucks it makes you hate the army it makes you want to get out it makes you just unhappy and miserable every day when you go to work when you go to work at least your co-workers should make you feel like i kind of don't like this stuff but i know my best battle is going to be there and my nco is cool as heck like we vibe really well so it's going to be a good day we're going to have fun because my nco is lit you know what i'm saying my nco it's cool. Like, we, she, he or she is stern. Like, when it's time to get the job done, time to get the job done. But, you know, they're approachable enough to talk to. And we're able to, like, have a little bit of a lax, be lax a little bit enough to feel comfortable with my NCO. And actually, they know me as a person and everything of that nature. You know what I'm saying? So, what is a toxic leader? I feel like public, humili public humiliation is the wrong answer and that makes you a toxic leader. If every time you want to correct your soldier, it's in a group front of people, it's like you're trying to show off in front of people, show off in front of like your first sergeant's around or some higher leadership is around, so you want to yell. Or even correcting the soldiers in front of a lot of soldiers, but in a manner that's like hostile or cursing at them or, you know, just not a comfortable space. Because some people can handle it, right? That doesn't bother them. There's some people that don't like it and there's some people that don't say anything about it and just allow you to belittle them and then they're going home crying and hurt and sad and feeling uncomfortable in the workplace. If I feel uncomfortable at work because of my NCO, that is a toxic environment and that's a hostile work environment and that's somewhere that I don't want to be. And if that is the case, your NCO talks to you crazy all the time, cursing at you. Not I have a bad habit of cursing. Um, in general, but I don't curse at my soldier. Like, you are dumbass. Like, you're dumbass, Lisa. You're stupid. As, like, I don't speak in that manner, but I'm like, what the hell? What the. Da, da, da. Like, I speak and I'll curse, but it ain't. 
it's not directed towards the soldier, if that makes sense. Um, um, but yeah, just basically talking aggressively, um, and especially like embarrassing the soldier. If you're going to correct somebody, if I want to get corrected, right, and I did something messed up in my E7 or my Sergeant Major or my first Sergeant wants to talk to me, I'm going to want them to pull me aside and not embarrass me in front of my peers or subordinates or whoever the case may be. Um, I want, I want, I want respect, and everybody's entitled to respect. You know what I'm saying? So, public communication to me is a no-no. That's a, that's a big no-no. You're gonna, if I'm gonna correct you, I'm gonna pull you to the side, unless it's something like you're late to formation and you're running up, and I'm like, hey, soldier, why are you late? That's kind of like you're, you're embarrassed. You, you publicly humiliated yourself by coming to formation late. You, everybody sees you running up. You probably get an on-spot correction, as long as it's done with tact. You know what I'm saying? If you're, um doing something that requires an honest spot correction and it just so happened to be in front of individuals as long as that nco is trying to correct you in the most tactfully it can be stern but it can be tactful like look you were messed up this is what needs to happen da -da -da. roger boom call it a day you know what i'm saying some stuff does need to be addressed in front of a in front of your squad because it's like we can't let you continue to get away with stuff and everybody needs to know that this is no this is not acceptable and this is going to stop today you know what i'm saying but as far as being like hey you effed up your uniform looks fucking ridiculous blah, blah, blah. like you know talking really nasty and negative and just embarrassing that soldier is a no no big no no for me because if you're gonna do all that you're gonna chew their ass to the point where they might want to fight you or something like that you you might want to take it over there take it offline because not everybody needs to know or they don't need to feel so embarrassed about that um to face the NCO. So you got the NCOs, and I've dealt with this multiple times, that talk to you like you're such a good soldier and, you know, you know, just beef it up and make it look nice and smile in your face. And in that same breath, they turn around and talk about you or talk about, you know, someone else in front of you or a case may be. So I've had an incident where an NCO, um, E6 at the time, would talk to the NCOs and be like, yeah, you need the soldiers this and the soldiers that and the soldiers this. But then go to the soldiers and talk down about me and my battle. And me, I'm very blunt. I'm very comfort confrontational person, and a lot of people don't like that. I'm gonna speak on what I, I'm gonna speak on how I feel in a tactful manner, but I'm gonna say what I mean and mean what I say. So, anytime I feel like at this point somebody's saying something or doing something that I don't like in regards to me or to my soldiers, I'm gonna address them. So, I said if there's something that you feel like I can do better as an NCO, being that you are my squad leader or you're my platoon sergeant, you need to come to me directly. Don't talk to my soldiers about how you feel like that I can be a better NCO. If you feel like I'm lacking in an area, you speak to me. You don't talk to my soldiers. Because at the end of the day, the NCO corps is supposed to be together. So you shouldn't be talking about any, any any NCO, especially not to my soldiers, if you feel like there's something I can do better or correct. Which, at the time, they were just being toxic. That was toxic as hell because what they were saying was, it wasn't even it wasn't even making sense. It wasn't even valid. It wasn't the right thing to do or right thing to say. And it didn't make any sense. So, point my period is, don't go to my soldiers talking a mess about an NCO. If you're an NCO, you're my platoon sergeant, you come to the NCO and you let them correct the deficiency. And then, you know what I'm saying? See if I adjust, fire, and change uh, whatever you felt like I could have improved on. But don't talking to talking mess about your NCOs or any NCOs to a soldier is the wrong answer. That's toxic as hell. So what you're not gonna do is tell me one thing and act like it's the soldier's fault, and then go to the soldier and act like it's the NCO's fault. No, because when we both call you out and say what you said, and they go say what you said, you're gonna be looking real, you know, lost in the head because now you're being fake and two faced. If you feel some type of way you speak on it, you address that individual directly. Don't go to other people and talk about what the case may be. And also with that, we got to pay attention to NCOs that talk about other NCOs in front of you, if you're a soldier. And when they talk about other soldiers in front of you, because it's like, if NCO wants to rant about another NCO, or a rant in general, they should talk to NCOs. If an NCO feels like a soldier did something messed up, then you talk to their NCO, or talk to their squad leader, to platoon sergeant, or whoever is in their, you know, their little rim of NCOs to figure out what's the best course of action to fix that individual's behavior. But what they should be doing is calling Jimmy John Louie a shitbag in front of a specialist. You know what I'm saying? No. If you're going to talk to a specialist and you want them to have better leadership development skills, you need to speak to them in a manner like, hey, this is going to be, your, this is your assigned soldier. You're going to be a team leader. This is the deficiencies I see in this soldier. Here's the ways that you can try to fix it. Write them a counseling. Whatever case may be, they're trying to, you know, work up a specialist to be an NCO, stuff like that. But talking to a specialist or another private, talking about how that soldier is a shitbag, they're not going to respect that soldier and they're not going to respect you as an NCO because why aren't you not correcting him? Why aren't you not fixing the deficiency? Why are you just talking mess? So watch out for NCOs, officers, all of them that do that little. As soon as an soldier or NCO walk away, they quick to talk, talk mess about them. Like, are we grown? Like, what is, what is this? Like, why are we, why are we being... And I, I shut it down, too. I, 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 
Don't add me in that conversation because you know what's going to happen? They're going to say, Siren Baker and so-and-so was talking. And I wasn't. I ain't say it. They ain't going to think. So don't, don't, talk about, don't talk about nobody in front of me because what we going to go do? We're going to march our behind to that NCO, to that soldier, and we're going to talk about the issue because you're not going to put my name in the middle of nobody's mess. Period. No, ma'am, no, sir. I don't care what your rank is. No. If you got an issue with that soldier, with that individual, we're going to talk about it. We're going to squash the beef because what we're not going to do is have no animosity and no toxicity, you know, around me. Because I don't want parts of it. I don't want nothing to do with that. Um, another toxic leader trait is taking credit for the soldier's actions. So the soldier thought of an idea, right? And they executed it. And it was amazing. It was great. And when it time, came time to take credit, the NCO stepped in like, yeah, I'm the one that said, duh, 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 duh. I'm the one. No, you didn't. Why are you lying? I'm the one that came up with this idea. I'm the one that told you this is what we should do. I gave you... Um, a new idea or, or another way to accomplish this mission. So when the first time whoever comes around, it's like, oh yeah, that was my idea for Sarn. Like, get this guy, cause he's lying. Like, you ain't do nothing. You really sat back and let the soldiers do everything. So you really don't need to say nothing to anybody. If anything, if you should be saying anything is, my soldiers did a damn good job. Like they did all da, da, da. He, she had this idea and they executed the well. You should be bragging on your soldiers, not taking credit for action that you had nothing to do with. Cause what? Cause how that work? <laughs> um, another one is lack of leadership presence. So, for instance, right, I'm 88 Mike, and my soldiers have been in the motor pool from 930 to 1700, and I ain't been out there once. Um, at this point, I would be a squad in a squad leader position, or or yeah, I'll be in a squad leader position, right? But I ain't been out. I ain't been outside all day. Even when I was E5, I, your E5 is not outside all day, but you've been outside all day, and you're like, hey, sorry, it's hot. Blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you need to stay outside. That's your place of duty. Do you know it's hot as? H E double hockey sticks outside. It's cold. It's it's the F. Try not to curse. It's cold. And you want me to stay outside all day when you're not even out here? You're inside in the AC kiki and laughing while we're outside in the motor pool. And also not that. There's no direction. There's no motivation. There's no purpose of the reason why we're out here. There's no you're not giving me motivation motivation to be out here because you're not out here. There's no direction of what are we doing? I mean, do we have a mission? Should I be lifting up flat racks? Should should I be test road testing my vehicles? Like you're not even out here to give giving me direction, but you want me to stay outside all day. No, Sergeant, I don't feel like that's right. Like, why why are you not outside? Like in this generation, right? We got this with well, this new generation that's coming up in the military. And it's new society. It's a wise society. Why are we doing this? And, it, and I feel like that's okay in a manner of which um, it's respectful. Nah, yeah, well, I'm glad to, you know, not, but like, you know, just giving, instead of giving soldiers the opportunity to ask why, explain why when you're asking, the, telling them to do what they have to do. Like, we're doing this because da da da. That way they don't have to, you don't have to feel disrespected when somebody comes to you like, why me gotta do that? You know what I'm saying? It is a wide generation. It is a wide society now. So it's changing. We're not the same military that we were way back when. It's totally different. You know, atmosphere is totally different society, totally different soldiers, totally different time period of life. That the stuff ain't the same that it was 30 years ago. You're not getting punched. We're not getting forced to be here. Like it's it's a choice. You know what I'm saying? So nobody wants to get, you know, cheated bad badly. Nobody wants to be in the motor pool all damn day and their NCO not even out there. Nobody. Do. I don't even. I don't even want to do that. I don't want to be outside all damn day and it's hot as hell. And I gotta be outside all day. If if there's a way that I can get my soldiers out of the motor pool and we're done with our mission, they're gonna go on. They're, or they're gonna be on standby doing SSD one and two or CD. What is it called now? DLC one and two and um correspondence courses. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, nobody wants to be in a motor pool all day. And nobody wants to be outside with a lack of leadership presence and a lack of direction and motivation. Like if you're not out here, if you're not doing the work, if you're not contributing to this team. Why do I? Why do I have to wake up every day and be motivated to come here when I know my NCO is going to be inside in the AC or inside the heat and I'm going to be outside struggling and suffering and we're all running around with our heads chopped off because we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Or this senior specialist is acting like the NCO and he ain't the NCO. Why the NCO ain't doing no work? Like, as an NCO, you, you should want to be in the motor pool with your soldiers. I be I miss being on the line. I do not like being in the office no longer. I want to be on the line with my soldiers mentoring and training and teaching them how to do the best stuff. You know what I'm saying? So... That's a big one. Lack of leadership presence can definitely make a toxic leadership or too much leadership presence where they're coming off very strong, very aggressive, very like hostile. I was like, you don't have to be like that. To get respect from people, you don't have to yell and scream at them. You can talk to them. And I promise you, you get more respect from these soldiers now having a conversation than yelling. Because what that's going to do? You can be stern when they mess up. And as far as yelling and talking down to them, I guarantee you, 
while they're around you, they're gonna do the work. When you the, when you're gone, they're down. They're bad mathing you. They're not doing what you ask them to do. They can care less. They don't care. Like when soldiers really mess with you, they rock with you. They're gonna make sure that you look good too, because they're a reflection of their NCO. So if they're gone, if you're an asshole and they hate you, when you're gone, your shit's gonna fall apart because they're like, oh, that person not here. I ain't doing none of that shit. Fuck that. He gonna be he gonna look down when the platoon sergeant come and ask him why the shit not done. It's gonna be his fault. But when your soldiers rock with you, they're gonna make sure that they did everything to make their NCO look good because they know the NCO gonna have their back. Period. Um, another one could be, or another one is not taking fault on their actions. So, for instance, I told a soldier, "Hey, go ahead and um go to lunch at ten thirty, and then they come back at thirteen hundred, and the platoon sergeant said, "Hey, soldier, who told you you can go to lunch at ten thirty? Oh, sorry, so and so. And then they like, "I ain't tell you you can go to lunch at ten thirty. Don't lie on me." So you mean to tell me that I just left the motor pool and you didn't tell me that I can go? Or you told them that, uh, like I did this the other day. I um I don't know a lot of, a lot of um, I didn't know chief ranks. So when they're W1, they're not considered a chief. They're just Mr. and Mrs., I believe. Or you still call them? I don't know. I don't know much about the warrant officer rank, right? So I told my soldier to put CW1 on the truck for our chief. And the first time I went to the soldier, like, what what is a CW one? He was like Chief One Officer One. He was like that doesn't that doesn't exist. Who told you to do that? And he said Sergeant Baker. And then I was like, yeah, you're right. I did tell him to do that. That's my bad. I told my soldier to put that on the truck. I wasn't tracking that you don't get to get get called Chief into CW two. So the rank is W O one. Yeah, but I I don't know about one officer. So instead of being like I ain't tell you that or just trying to act like I didn't tell him that, no. Nah. I went the first time. I was like, "Yeah, that's my bad." I thought I ain't know that you wasn't a chief when you was a warrant officer. I just thought it went boom straight to chief. Cause when I see a warrant officer one, I salute and I say good morning, chief. So you know that's just me not knowing. I, I lack that knowledge and I'm gonna take fault for my action. I ain't know. Period. But I'm gonna tell my soldier, "Yeah, that's my L. My bad. I told you the wrong thing. I apologize. But we can fix it. Period. We both learned something today, right?" And we'd be like, yeah, we both learned something. You know what I'm saying? And another thing is like your NCO doesn't have your back. If your NCO not going hard for you. To me, that's a toxic trait. Because why are you not going hard for your soldier? What do you mean? That's the person that's supposed to keep... you supposed to keep each other alive when y'all go down range and y'all are a squad and you the squad leader or you the team leader. Your soldiers should have your back and you should have their back. If you don't got their back, they definitely don't got yours. So that means that y'all squad, y'all platoon or whatever the case may be, is broken. And when shit get real, they might leave you for dead. Because you ain't never had their back, so why they going to risk their life for you if you won't risk your life for them? So you got to... You know, keep that in mind when you out here being rude and nasty to these soldiers. Like when 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 the going gets tough and shit get real, you want your soldiers to have your back, and they gonna want you to lead them and give them purpose and direction when shit gets real. They're gonna be depending on you. If they can't depend on you, what are you waiting to for? Why you wear stripes? It's worthless. You should just go ahead and get your specialist back because you're doing a bad job. Period. So that's what I got on a little bit of notes of, of being toxic. What are the toxic leadership? What are the toxic leadership traits and things that are not okay as an NCO and how we can do better as NCOs across the board? And here are some ways to help you deal with toxic leadership. And some to, be, to some people, this be like, this is bad. You shouldn't do that. No, I'm going to give a little story time. Snitch. I'm sorry. Snitch. You gotta you gotta report it. You gotta report it, and don't feel bad. I said snitch, but that's not what I mean. I mean report it though, because here's a little story time. So I had a toxic leader, very toxic leader, who said inappropriate comments at work about my body, uh, made me feel uncomfortable about my YouTube. Like he would ask battle buddies, um, "Are they? Is that? Are they?" He would see a guy in my video and be like, "Oh, they're they're having sexual intercourse. Are, are they having sexual intercourse?" Just overly invested in my life in a manner which he shouldn't be as a senior leader in my my company or my, my, my chain of command. You shouldn't be worrying about my sexual orientation, what I do in my personal time, if it's not, you know, bad or unmoral and unethical and it is for the army values. You shouldn't be worrying about that. You shouldn't be talking, saying anything sexual about my body parts. Um, shouldn't be demanding me to give you my phone so you can see my Instagram, like stuff like that, right? And I was a, I started off as a specialist, got promoted, E5, and I didn't report it. I just kind of like, he would bother me and it would irritate me. And I just was so worried about not messing up this man's career. When I shouldn't have been worried about that, I should have been worried about my well being and my mental health and how it was affecting me and how I didn't like that. And I should have thought, there's somebody that has to come after me to also to do with this. And this person is going to continue to go up the ranks 
thinking that they're doing the right thing or that nobody's noticing the stuff that they're doing, stuff that they're doing wrong because I was scared to speak up. You got to speak up. Um, and if if your first sign is not helping and you got to go to IG or, and that doesn't help, there's somebody in your chain of command. If you even got to go to your doggone star major, there's somebody in your chain of command that cares about their soldiers. There's somebody in the chain of command that, like me, that's really passionate about mentorship that's going to make sure that you get either switched out the squad and, and basically you'll probably be brought up to a larger scale because if that's happening to you, it's probably happening to others. So my point was I was getting really like um, irritated and bothered by this individual, but I was so scared to say stuff that when I left, I was left as E5, a soldier reached out to me and was like, how did you deal with this? How did you deal with him? Like, how did you do this? Like, basically, he's doing the same things to her and making her feel uncomfortable. He make, making her feel uncomfortable. Um, I, she didn't really go into detail, but it was more so like, how did you deal with him? How did you put up with this? And I basically was like mad at myself and I fell down and I felt like I was, I, I failed as an NCO because I didn't report that. And now another soldier has to deal with what I did, what I dealt with. And this person ended up getting out the military. And who's in, I don't really know. Maybe she didn't like it anymore, but he could have been an, a reason why she chose to get out. And if I just would have reported it, I would have told somebody what was going on. Maybe it could have changed him being like, oh shit, I need to, you know, fix myself. I'm effing up. Or, you know, got him early retired or whatever the case may be because when there's people like that that's high in rank they abuse their power and it's our job to make sure that people like that get out the military or have some type of consequences for their actions um if you're treating soldiers bad or you're doing stuff inappropriately nobody wants to stay in the army like that and it's not fair um that you get to be this higher ranking maybe soon to be sergeant major and your ethics and your or your morals are messed up and the and the way you treat soldiers is messed up and how you speak to individuals is messed up. Like they need a wake up call. They need somebody to tell them like, Hey look, you're fucked up. Like you need to change these actions because that's not acceptable. And I'm just mad that I didn't report it. So when I say report it or snitch, report it. Because somebody after you might have to deal with the same person and they need to know that they're that they're messing up. Um, another thing is having squad level or platoon level sensing sessions, um, open up the floor. Hopefully your platoon sergeant is more, if your squad leader is, you know, bad, maybe hopefully your platoon sergeant, um, is better. And you can be like, let's have a squad level sensing session or platoon sergeant. Because a lot of times, NCOs be thinking they're doing amazing. They're doing great. And sometimes they need that leader. They need that soldier, you know, that direct mentorship they're giving to people to tell them, like, hey, Sergeant, I kind of didn't, in a tactful manner, hey, Sergeant, I kind of didn't like how you said that or did this or how you do this or how you picked the certain people for detail, you know? And they, they can have a reflection, like, damn, I thought I was doing really well. Let me improve. So having squad, le squad level and platoon level um, sitting sessions will definitely help because I'm telling you, a lot of people do not know that they're toxic. They don't know that they're they're hostile they think they're just talking and it's like no you come off very rude and disrespectful so you know just having having an open um, means of communication that's something that I've, I've learned I learned in my in my last in my last couple of years and something that I'm taking away like tell me how I'm doing as your NCO what are you expecting out of me what can I do better it's all about what you can you do better excuse my dogs but what can I do better what can I do to make this squad a fucking family like you know what I mean? That's my end goal, to make all my squads feel like we're a big family. We're a home of him home, and that's how it should be, because a lot of us are far away from home. And we do look at each other like brothers and sisters, mother and fathers. So it's like, how can this team be better? What can I do better to make you guys feel like we're a team, and I'm on the same team as y'all, and it's not us, you against me, or the NCOs against the soldiers. Like, we all are one, and we're all happy together. And another way to um, cope with it is behavioral health. I had to go to behavioral health because I felt like I needed an outlet to vent. And I know I couldn't tell my E7 to F off. I couldn't tell him to kiss my A word because then I'd probably get kicked out. So I had to go to behavioral health and just talk to a counselor and say whatever I want to say. This MF got me messed up. Blah, 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 blah. Having that healthy outlet to, for someone that you can speak to. Someone that you can talk to. Yeah, that should, you know, help. And I'm always a Snapchat message away. If you need some advice, feel free to write me. My Snapchat will be here, Sweets Calore. Um, or you can email me at sweetscalore at gmail.com if you need some advice. I am your NCO away from your NCO, period. If you need some advice or you need some help with, you know, an NCO and you need somebody else higher ranking to help you talk to this NCO, I am available and I'm here to help and mentor any and everybody that needs it, whether it's a soldier, whether it's an E6, E5, whether it's an E7A. I don't care. I talk to anybody. And we all, just because of how high in rank we are, don't know everything and we can improve in some areas. So that's pretty much all I got on my advice for toxic leadership. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a little bit long. Um, that's because I'm really passionate about things like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, my name is Staff Sergeant Baker. And you guys have a great day, morning, evening. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!